Welcome to Lifter Story Podcast with guest Kimberly Coyle, owner of Kim Coyle Content. Hi everyone, I'm Laurieann. I am that gal from Toronto, Canada, and I and I'm with I'm that guy. I am Roy Miller from Dallas, Texas. Welcome to our Lifter Story Podcast. In this episode, we welcome Kimberly Coyle, and she's the owner of Kim Coyle Content. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> So you were in public relations, right? That's correct, yes. And so tell us a little bit about what it's like being in public relations. You know, we hear a lot about it. I don't think people really understand what public relations is. Yeah, so public relations, I was in for um, over a decade uh, with uh, various um, agriculture and food organizations. And what that means is it's public relations is not just uh, writing, it's also about communicating and doing media relations and government relations, as well as doing social media and planning events. And so it's all of the uh, public facing activities uh, that go on kind of behind the scenes and uh, forefront uh, with uh, organizations. And you're also involved in in, uh, food supply chain. Is that correct? Is that the way to describe it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so most of my work experience had been with different food and agriculture organizations. And so I was with um, a company for over eight years that was um, in the livestock industry, which was with talking about how um, telling the farmer stories of how food gets to the table and then connecting it with consumers because consumers are very interested in knowing um, where their food comes from. So it's helping to connect that farm to table uh, story. Farm to table is a big deal nowadays. Yes, it is. Yeah. As we were talking about that, my mother said when they were younger, they used to go and pick dandelions and my, her mother, we used to make dandelion salads. Of course, back then was the depression. She goes, now you don't want to go and pick up dandelions because you don't know what's sprayed on them. That's So, so very true. Yeah. Well, okay. So, your business is about telling stories, basically. Yes, that's right. And so what happened was, unfortunately, I had a layoff a couple of years ago at the agriculture organization. And so it gave me um, an opportunity to kind of look at what I really enjoyed with those jobs. And I realized that writing and storytelling was truly my passion. And I wanted to help more businesses to tell their stories, as it's not just putting out a message and selling a product. It's really I get to know my clients on a deeper level and I ask them questions about what's important to them and helping them to tell their stories. And it's also a lot of businesses just don't have the time to do all the writing with social media posts and blogs and newsletters. And so I help take that off of their plate so that they can focus on their businesses. And I do that writing for them, whether it's writing the full newsletter or if they just want help editing they've done the writing but they want um, just a proofreader or I also even offer just if you need ideas of what to write about because sometimes it's just you feel like you're putting the same piece of material out but I can give ideas of how to maybe change it up and rework it a bit so it's kind of I offer that full range of writing services depending on where the client's needs are. What's one of the most interesting stories that you've told? Is that what you're going to ask? I bet that, right? (laughs) Yeah, so I've um, worked with a health and wellness uh, company. And so they just had a story about how um, one of their clients just really needed um, some help with a personal issue. And they really told, without going into the details because of confidentiality, they just really wanted me to help tell that story of how their service really changed their client and transformed it. And just being able to help them um, deliver that story was just a really rewarding experience for me to help them do that. Well, that's, that's, that's kind of our premise here is because we believe no matter who you are, you have a story that people want to hear. Yeah, exactly. You know, you don't have to be famous. You don't have to be a celebrity. Um, I mean, just everyday average people. There's always something interesting that they have to share. We like exactly. to get that out. 
And that's why I thought that when uh, I was approached to be on this podcast, I thought it would be a perfect uh, fit because just the name of the podcast, Lift Your Story. So yeah, I think it's really important to tell that story. So I'm curious, do you have a story yourself about how you got into public relations? What brought you there? Yeah. How would you want to do as a kid? (laughs) um, as As a kid, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. And my parents always said, you're you love to talk and you love to write. As soon as I could start forming sentences, I was writing. And so they kind of knew right away that like something in the writing and communicating field was going to be where I was going to likely land my career. And I I thought about it and I wasn't sure. But then as soon as I started, I knew that this is where my passion is. And so um, I'm fortunate that I know a lot of people don't really know when they try different careers, but I kind of knew uh, as soon as I started, this is where I meant to be. So we, one of the little girls would always uh, wrote in their diary and yep. you know, <laughs> kept track of their you know daily stuff and then went on probably in school to, to be on the school paper or the yearbook committee or that type of thing. You want to know what? I actually was on the yearbook committee and I was <laughs> in the writing groups and um, Sometimes, uh, yeah, it was always part of um, extracurricular and uh, always excelled in English and the writing uh, fields. So have you written a book yet as well, or is that in your... So many people have asked me that question, and I haven't yet, um, because I know a lot of people say it takes a lot of work to write it, and I probably could. I just haven't had the time to sit down and actually do that, but... I have a feeling one day there will be a book uh, from me. What, what do you think your book might be about? I have a feeling it's going to be about um, travel. As with my family uh, growing up, I've uh, lived in uh, four different countries. And so Bahamas, the United States, Canada, and England. And so just uh, learning and experiencing the different cultures. And I think that would make a really nice uh, book that people would probably want to read and relate to. Are, are you a Canadian citizen? By yes, birth? I am. I, I, absolutely. Yes. By birth? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you know, I'll say on purpose, right? Okay. Just yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I always so said the traveling... I, traveled, I traveled as a kid too. And I always said that, you know, Canadians should all be out or anyone should go and stay in another country, another foreign country for a while just to, uh, I was happy to come back to Canada. Let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah. yeah, you want to know what? I was too. Yeah, it, there's so many great things here in Canada, but it's great to experience other cultures. And yes. um, I even find that just kind of my whole food story has connected kind of back because working in agriculture and I've been able to see kind of the different food uh, experiences in different uh, countries as well. So uh, it kind of ties in together. Well, Canada is a beautiful country. It yeah, it sure is. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it is. And I I want to explore more of it once. I I know we're allowed to travel within the country, but I'm just not comfortable getting on a plane yet. But even just locally, there's so many uh, great places to see as well, to tell more stories. Well, and I was surprised at how clean it is in Canada. Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of litter here in the States, but in Canada, there was no litter, the flowers, and all the parks are absolutely beautiful. And what's surprising, all the parks are packed with people. Yeah. It's not that way here. On the weekends, soccer, baseball, football, lacrosse, they're packed. Sports, but yeah. As far as going to the park, you don't see that much. That, that's actually true. Now that you bring that up, I remember that, that, yeah, people weren't at the parks. They were at the sporting events and um, – I, w- I wonder why that is, but yeah, like a lot of the young mothers would take their kids up to on the swing sets and stuff, you know. But other than just like like in Canada, people just, they're out in the park walking, you know, just <clears throat> but not here or not yeah. in Dallas anyway. Which is surprising yeah. too, because I know with all our Canada geese and all the little poopies <laughs> everywhere, we still go to the park. <laughs> yeah. I remember being in Bermuda and I couldn't believe it. I said to my ex-husband, I said, what's wrong with this picture? He goes, what do you mean? I said, there's a mother and her family sitting on the grass with, with no you know, blanket <laughs> below them. <laughs> oh. Because <laughs> they don't have any Canada geese in, Ber- in Bermuda. That's true. Yeah. So 
it was kind of fun. And yes, and yesterday when I went to see my daughter, she's, uh, you would know this, obviously, Kimberly, uh, the Burlington, the beach along there is beautiful. And yes. uh, there were so many people out on the beach yesterday. It was nice. I, it's nice to see people out again. It is. It's really nice to see people out finally after so long being kind of cooped up at home. And yeah, Burlington is beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. So, so what, uh, in regards to um, your ideal client, who would you, how would you explain your ideal client? Yeah, I'd say my ideal client would be a small business in food or agriculture that needs help with kind of the writing. And uh, that doesn't mean to say that I don't work with any client because obviously um, I can write for any industry, but that food and agriculture is kind of where my passion is and just helping them get that message out. What's your favorite food? Favorite food? I love uh, steak and uh, potato at uh, dinner. <laughs> I would have yeah, thought a little bit, I would have thought a little bit, you know, because you, you've had so many different, so if there was an ethnic food, let's say, non, non, you know, North American, what would it be? Ooh, um, I'd probably say I like a good butter chicken, like an Indian, not super spicy, but just that butter chicken and the non bread. Um, yeah, it's just totally different than what a Canadian, a typical Canadian dish would be. Absolutely. What's yours, Roy? Do you My, eat anything that's <laughs> anything outside of Texas? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, what, I like Tex-Mex yep. food. Now, that's not Mexican food. That's Tex-Mex. There's a difference. Yes, there is. <laughs> when you go outside Texas, you cancel Mexican food. It's no good. Really? Yeah. Even going to New Mexico, it's different than Texas. It's not, it's totally different. Tex-Mex is unique to Texas. That's interesting. It, do you agree? I do agree. I don't know totally what the difference is, but I know what the Tex-Mex um, yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. If you go somewhere outside of Texas and get Mexican food, you'll be disappointed. That's Please. interesting. We had, we had a lot of... Uh, Mexican well we lived in Reno for a while and so we had a okay. lot of Mexican there and then we went to California and there's a lot but I've never been to Texas so I cannot speak to that yeah. <laughs> I'll let you know <laughs> yeah so in your in your when you started your business yes. you know uh, how hard was it for you to get started it, it was a real challenge, obviously, starting last summer in the middle of COVID. Um, but what I did was I, I didn't have a lot of clients to start with. But what I did was on my social media is I gave like writing tips um, and advice to kind of get the word out so that when businesses were starting to open again, they'd hopefully know who I was and I had established kind of that credibility. So yes, it was a struggle for the first a while. And then it was early this year that I really started uh, picking up clients again. So yeah, a lot of people said I was very brave and bold to start a business during the middle of a global pandemic. But I thought, let me give it a shot and see where it goes. And I don't regret looking back on it. We've had a lot of guests that, you know, COVID in, in one respect was really great for them because they were able to write that book you know, yeah. finish that project or whatever, because they had the time to do it. Yes. Yeah. And it, it gave me the time to set up the website and kind of get things started that I probably wouldn't have before. So, so yeah, I had the time. Yeah. So how is it that you tend to reach out to your, to your prospective clients? I know, I know in Milton, luckily still, there's a lot of agriculture in that area. So I would imagine that you're very lucky to have some around, but what sort of tools did you use to reach, do you use to reach out to them? Yeah, a big uh, thing that I did was I became a member of the Milton Chamber of Commerce that had a lot of connections. And so finally, I went to the first uh, in-person meeting um, two weeks ago. So it was nice to actually meet uh, people that I had only had the virtual connections with for the past year. And then I'm also part of um, a few uh, farming writing groups that using those connections. 
as well as uh, I'm really trying to grow my uh, LinkedIn following uh, just to get the word out that way. And Instagram and Facebook I'm on as well, just trying to see I'm using kind of the Milton hashtags to kind of see who's out there and trying to uh, just see where I can uh, find new opportunities and new businesses. Fantastic. And uh, yeah. I know that Mayor Krantz, uh, the mayor of Milton, he's, uh, that's what his upbringing was, was farming, yes. which I find interesting. It's the longest, by the way, just out there for people to know, he's yes. actually the longest, uh, the, the, the mayor that's held office for the longest in Canada. Is it in Canada? Wow. In Canada, yeah. Uh, mayor Hazel McCallion was up there okay. and then he's, he's passed over her now. <laughs> so, so yeah. yeah. I feel pretty good in Milton having that uh, strong connection. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I know in the city I live, you know, you mentioned Chamber of Commerce, which is great. And then they also yeah. have an economic development group yes. that, uh, you know, like people come in like that and, you know, try to work with them and, you know, discuss, you know, stuff in the city and stuff. So that's probably a great idea. Yes. The, the yes. Chamber. You know. Yeah, and it's a very it's a very active chamber too, which is, is. really nice. Yeah. So funny thing is. is, by the way, just again in little trivia, I knew Scott when he was the uh, oh. the executive director of the Burlington Chamber of Commerce, which was like twenty some odd years ago. Okay. And, uh, and then he got into the Ontario Chamber of Commerce, and now he's back in Milton. So Milton. that's that's kind of fun. That's small cool. world in that way. <laughs> oh yeah, You're a very small world. Yeah. So. This is uh, absolutely wonderful. Is there anything that you want to share beyond as far as your writing? And and because uh, you were talking about, I know ideas are very difficult to come up with. How do you yes. find your creativity? What would be one of those? I think I it's secrets? just, I don't even know if it's a secret. I almost just feel like I just have that talent to come up with the ideas. And so, and I have a list of, well, we're a long word document with kind of ideas. And so I always kind of just go back to that. And um, it was just over the several years, I just kept building on it. And there's, I always find that there's a, you can have an idea, but you can maybe portray it in a different way, reword it a little bit. Um, and so I just always just keep, keep that document ongoing. And so that it's, um, I've always got ideas for uh, for different clients and even just for my business content, uh, so that I I'm not always putting out the same the same thing. And people are like, "Oh, it's just Kim putting out the same thing again." It's always trying to just reword it or um, a little bit. Yeah, I know. From I'm not, of course, I'm not a writer, but I mean, like especially at work and stuff, and having to write stuff, I've had to kind of be in a in the, the I call it the zone. I had to be in this certain frame of mind. And I can do it, but yes. if I'm not in that, then it's it's a struggle. It's really a struggle. I I can understand, and even as kind of a writer, I have days where I'm just like, nope, my creativity is not there, and that's why with a lot of my clients, I do ask them for a little bit of lead time so that if I'm not feeling the writing that day, it's not a big issue. Because yeah, there are days when it's just not feeling the creativity. Yeah. Yeah. I, know, I know a girl, she said her, her goal is to write 300 words a day, no matter what. Yeah. She said, you know, I like I, I, a minimum of 300 words a day, I have to write, you know, yeah. feel like I'm, you know, getting my stuff done. So she said, I might write 3,000 one day and, you know, fly through it. But then the next day, it's a struggle to get 300. Yeah. <laughs> I actually like that because... When you actually think about it, 300 words isn't that much, but if you put that goal for every day, that's really good. Yeah. She said that works for her, which I thought that's was good. pretty interesting. Yeah. But then again, it might take you eight hours to write 300 <laughs> words if you're not going to write. Yep. Yep. <laughs> It's you just like I mean. writing notes for the podcast. I always say to people, I'll get everything up in 24 to 48 hours, but the notes may take a few days because yeah. I have to be in that right way. And I mean, the notes are what, what take me the most time to, uh, to just conjure up and, and they're not always perfect. And I know they're not always perfect. And you're always worried about that with your client, which I would imagine sure. that's something like you're writing for somebody. That's a difficult sure. thing to do. 
I mean, writing for yourself is one thing, but when it's for a client, it's different. And that's why I always do give a little bit of lead time so I can go back and I can edit things because I might have the ideas, but maybe it's not polished and sounding the best, but at least the ideas are there. So some, some clients will say, why does it take that long to write that? And it's, it doesn't take that long. It's just getting it to the level of where I'm comfortable presenting it to you. Yeah, that's perfectly yeah. said. Yeah. yeah, well, I can, I can just imagine somebody going, so you write stuff? How hard can that be? <laughs> yes, I, I get that. A lot of people are just like, I can write on my own, but it's, is it good, good writing that people are going to want to read? And I feel like um, I've seen a lot of sloppy writing and I feel that um, I want to always present my clients with the professional best writing um, possible because that, that's your business or your image that you're portraying. And so you want it to be professional. Okay, that's really uh, scary now. I don't want to write the notes for her. She's going to be <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> really, um, Lori? This is, this is <laughs> really? This is it? <laughs> yeah, I can write books, but I can't write notes. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, had a, <laughs> I had a curious question too. When you say agriculture, what does that encompass? I mean, because people will think, you know, um vegetation but it does it also incorporate you know i'm sorry but like i mean agriculture yeah. includes like you know um chickens and yeah cows so, and all of that stuff so yeah so it's um agriculture can be um the livestock which is like uh your cows your pigs and then you have grain farming which is all the different grains the corn the soybeans and then there's the whole vegetable fruit and vegetable side and I kind of have worked with right from the farm through processing at the processing plants with livestock, right to uh, manufacturers, to the retailers, to restaurants. Um, so the whole, they call it the value chain of from farm to table. Okay. Does that help yeah. clarify a little bit? Absolutely. Because I just want to make sure that people know that, by the way, you know, Sargent. The, yes. The, yes. They, they were yes. my neighbor. Okay. Yes. So knock on their door. <laughs> they're really big. They're really big in milk. They are. Yeah. They're, they're, it's just a, amazing uh, what they've grown and how long they've been there. And uh, so yeah, they've been there a while. Yes, definitely. Yeah. That's so fun. It's fun to actually, you know, have a, a conversation with, with somebody who knows, you know, the area I've lived in for the last yeah. 10 years. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I think a lot of restaurants, they're starting to well, because the consumer is now asking for where, where does their food come from? So restaurants are now demanding or asking from their suppliers of where is it coming from? How was it raised? And so it's that whole conversation, which is really, really cool to see in Milton. I think a lot of the restaurants are doing a really good job of trying to get that local, local products on the table. Absolutely. How can you tell us what sustainable means? Because we hear that a lot here. Yeah, so sustainable can mean different things. I've worked uh, with the beef industry and sustainable. A lot of people in the beef industry just think consumers are trying to get away from red meat and their steaks because it's not as sustainable. It takes more uh, resources to get a cow from the farm to the table. And so they're using... Um, practices on their farm that are, I don't want to use the word sustainable, um, but it's, they're taking care of the land and making sure that they're doing the best that they can for the future generations of the farm so that there still will be the land that they can use to raise their, their livestock or their animals on. Yeah. So they're not trying to kill it with poison where it's going to be. Yes. So they're trying to make, make it natural. So it's, like it was back in the day where they yes. went out and planted and harvested it without all the chemicals and all the bad things. Exactly. Exactly. That we keep the, in the future, keep food from growing. Yeah. Right. If you don't take care of the land now, then it won't be there in the future to raise that, the animals or the crops. Okay, in a healthy and healthy manner. Yes, yeah. definitely. Exactly. So Kimberly, how can our listeners reach out to you for help? 
Yeah. So the best way to reach me, I would say is probably through email. And my email is Kim at Kim And I'm also on uh, social media, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Kim Coil content. Kim Coil content. Okay. Yes. Great. Perfect. Excellent. We so appreciate you being here. Very nice to meet you. It was very nice to meet uh, both of you as well. And I really want to say thank you for this opportunity. It means a lot to me as a small business owner. Absolutely. Well, we're, thank you we're, for sharing your stories. This is excellent. And this is something that we haven't talked about. We haven't talked about agriculture. We haven't talked about really public relations. So we really appreciate yeah, you being here. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.